All the yokes are taken away. All the curse is taken away from your life in Jesus' name. And now there is a red sea that divides you from the old life. And all the causes of the old life, they are over there, and then you are over here, you are separated. There is a gulf in between you. The causes will never cross over to meet you again in Jesus' name. Now, Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 26, verse 2. This is what I said is your mark. Chapter 26, verse 2. As the bird by wandering, and as a swallow by flying, so the curse causeless shall not come. The curse, causeless, shall not come. I've crossed over onto the promised land. The curse, causeless, shall not come. I am identified with Christ. He died for me. He shed his blood for me. He died for me on the cross of Calvary. The curse, causeless, shall not come. I have left the land of Egypt. I've left all those Amorites and all those Canaanites. I've left all those Gentiles. I'm now on the side of the Lord. I'm in the body of Christ. And because I'm now in the body of Christ, the curse, causeless, shall not come in Jesus' name. He has delivered me from the power of darkness. He has translated me into the kingdom of his dear son. And because I'm translated, I'm on this other side now. And it's the kingdom of light. It's the kingdom of power. I'm cleansed to the blood of the land, blood of Jesus. The curse, causeless, shall not come in Jesus' name. My body is not the temple of the Holy Ghost because he lives inside me. If he, the spirit that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead, dwells in your mortal body, he will quicken your mortal body. And because now I'm the temple of the Holy Ghost, the curse, causeless, shall not come. I said it shall not come. I said it shall not come. It will not come upon your life anymore in Jesus' name. Look at that verse 2 again. As the bird by wandering and the swallow by flying, so the curse, causeless, shall not come. You see what he said to me? As the bird by wandering. That means the bird was in this nest before. And all the things in the nest, they could not fly. And then the bird left that nest and left everything in that nest and then wandered away. Or then it says, and the swallow by flying left the nest and then flew away. That means you have gone away from all the things in that nest. All the things in that nest. Everything is now of the past. They will not be in your life anymore in Jesus' name. I come to tell you that your head is free from the curse. Your body is free from the curse. Your dreams are free from the curse. Your children are free from the curse. Your wife is free from the curse. Your husband is free from the curse. The work of your hand, the business you are doing is free from the curse in Jesus' name. You are going to walk out of this place free tonight. Free and free indeed. And the Lord will set you free in Jesus' name. I love this verse. And the bird by wandering and the soil by flying. So the curse, causeless, shall not come. They will not come. I said they will not come. Acts of the Apostles chapter 3. Acts of the Apostles chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 19. Acts of the Apostles chapter 3 verse 19. It says in verse 9, Repent ye therefore. That is, if all I need to do so that I'm free from the cause is to repent, repent ye therefore. If all I need to do is just to get away from Satan and run to Jesus, repent ye therefore. If all I'm to do is to break away from my past and then come to attach myself to the husband of my soul, to the bridegroom of my soul, and come to attach myself to the Lord Jesus Christ, all I need to do is get away from the past and come to this new life and everything will become totally new in your life in Jesus' name. Miracles you have never seen, you will see. The wonders you have never tasted, you will taste in Jesus' name. 
and all that God is waiting for in your life is that all the things of the past you throw them away and then you say I'm not in the past anymore I'm looking to the future now this is my heritage repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord the times of refreshing the times of refreshing the times of refreshing shall come unto you from the presence of the Lord in Jesus name and he shall send Jesus Christ which before was preached unto you whom the heaven must receive until the times of the restoration of all things the restitution of all things can I tell you that restoration 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 of all things will come to your life in Jesus name Everything that you have lost, everything is coming back. A child, you lost a child. Children, miracle children are coming back in Jesus' name. Any good thing you lost, any good thing you lost, any good thing you lost, they're coming back in your life in Jesus' name. The joy, the fulfillment, and the liberty, and the freedom, and the prosperity, and the good, good things that made your face to shine, your face will shine again. Because restoration is coming upon your life, whom the heaven must receive until the times of the restitution, restoration of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. In verse 26, unto you, Paul, God, having raised up his son, Jesus, sent him to bless you in turning you, in turning away everyone from his iniquity. It will happen. Look at Second Corinthians chapter 6. Second Corinthians chapter 6. There's a simple step you take. There's a simple thing you do. And then blessings will come upon your life. Are you there? I said blessings will come upon your life. It says in Second Corinthians chapter 6 verse 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. You know, some people do not understand that. All they think is, okay, I'm born again. And because of that, I should not marry an unbeliever. True, that's right. You should not marry an unbeliever. It's more than that. You know, there are some young people, they go to college. And then in the college, there are some unbelievers that establish uh, what they call, maybe a group or a cult or whatever. And then, because maybe somebody took care of them, somebody is visiting and somebody is befriending them, and they don't understand. And it says, you must not be unequally you together with unbelievers. Any kind of gang, any kind of group, any kind of society, any kind of, um, you know, congregation, that only the unbelievers are there. And then they go through a covenant process to become part of that. You cannot do that because now you have been translated out. It's like, you know, Moses uh, going back to Egypt and say, Pharaoh, I've come back. You will not go back. It's like Aaron or Miriam going back to Egypt and telling Pharaoh, I've come back. You will not go back in Jesus' name. Once you have been delivered out of Egypt and then you cross that Red Sea. In your own case, you may baptize in water and you cross the Red Sea and you come to this other side. You will not cross the Red Sea to go back into Egypt anymore. It will not happen to you. And so when a child of God, when he goes to join affinity with Ahab, he goes to join affinity with Pharaoh, he goes to join affinity with the cult, he goes to join affinity with all those unbelievers, that's what the Lord is saying. The yoke has been broken and that yoke will never come back in your life in Jesus' name. He says, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. You're not yoked together with them in business. You're not yoked together with them in a covenant. You're not choked together with them in marriage. You're not choked together with them in any kind of association, any kind of agreement. It says, be not unequal yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? Righteousness and unrighteousness must not be yoked together, must not be in the same group, must not be in the same society. It cannot be, it must not be. And then it says, and what communion? 
as light with darkness. You were under the power of darkness before now. You have been brought into the kingdom of his dear son, the kingdom of light. You must not go back to them. And what concord has Christ with Belial? And what part has seen that believeth was an infidel? What agreement has the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. Say, I am the temple of the living God. Say that again. Say that again. Now, would you, if you have a house, if you don't have a house yet, I pronounce it on you, you are going to have your own house. Now, let's say you have a house, and as you have the house, you find somebody that is coming from outside. You need to employ him. And then you begin to break the window. You fold your hand and be looking at them like this. And then it begins to break the door. It begins to, you know, do whatever it is. It begins to remove the roof. Will you allow that? If you are the temple of the living God, and then Satan wants to come, he wants to put cancer in your body. He wants to put tuberculosis in your body. And then he's breaking down your brain with brain problem. He wants to take your kidney away. He wants to do this. Will Jesus allow that? The Lord Jesus will break that head of the devil immediately. Say, don't touch my temple. That is my temple. That is why I came to tell you tonight, everything the, the devil came to put upon this temple I'm looking at now, all those things, I remove them in Jesus' name. They will not stand. I said they will not stand. Because tonight is the night where the temple of the Holy Ghost, the temple of God, will be totally free in Jesus' name. He said, because he at the temple of the living God, as, as God has said, I will dwell in them. I will walk in them. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, verse 17, come out from among them, and be ye separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord Almighty. And I say, Amen and Amen. Let's look at point number three. Now, point number three is remission and righteousness through his cross. Remission and righteousness through his cross. I'm looking at Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26. And we're looking at verse 28. It says, For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins which is shared for many for remission of sins. It says, if you believe, you are part of the many. If you accept, you are part of the many. If you say, Lord Jesus, I thank you. You died for me. You are part of the many. And it says, for the remission of the sins of many. You ask me, what's the difference between remission of sin and forgiveness of sin? Remission of sin and forgiveness of sin. You see, when you've done something wrong, then God forgives you. God forgives you. Say, praise the Lord, I'm forgiven. But then, you know, if you just have forgiveness alone without remission, the power to overcome that sin, you have been forgiven. You may not have the power. You may go back into it again because you only had forgiveness. But remission, the Lord cleanses you from the inside. He cleanses your brain. He cleanses your mind. He cleanses your habit. He breaks the power of cancel sin. And then on the record of God, in the book of uh, records, he takes everything away. So when the devil comes and he says, uh, why? Are you rejoicing after all? Were you not like this? Were you not like that? And then when you go to God and say, God, I am sorry. And God says, what are you sorry about? What I did about uh, two years ago. But I've forgiven you and I've remitted. I've given you remission already. Yes, but the devil is still telling me this and that. And God says, wait a minute. Let me see my record. He looks at the book of records. It's not even there. I said, it's not there. And so God said, I don't know what you are talking about because it's not a record. It is like you never did that thing in your life. And then you can tell the devil, devil, you are a liar. Can you tell him now? <laughs> did he hear you? <laughs> He's a liar. All those things are not in the, in the records of God anymore in Jesus' name. Because the Lord said, this is the blood, my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of 
their sins. Praise the Lord. All my sins are remitted. All my sins are taken away. They are blotted out. They will not come into remembrance anymore in Jesus' name. We're looking at Luke chapter 1 verse 74. Luke chapter 1 verse 74. That ye might grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies. No enemy will catch you again. Delivered out of the hands of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him. How long? All the days of our life. Living one day at a time, you remain righteous for the rest of your life in Jesus' name. And thou child shall be called the prophet of the highest. For thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his way and to give the knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins. By the remission of their sins. Remember, they will not be remembered against you anymore in Jesus' name. Romans, Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3. And we're reading from verse 25. Romans chapter 3, verse 25. Romans chapter 3, and reading from verse 25. It says in verse 25, who God has set forth to be a propitiation is a means of our cleansing, is a means of our atonement, is a means of our forgiveness and remission of sin through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of the sins that are past. For the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. And thank God from now on you can say praise the Lord. My sins are forgiven. Praise the Lord. There's remission of sins. Praise the Lord. The Lord of the wicked will not be upon me anymore. I said the Lord of the wicked will not be upon you anymore. Look at this in uh, Psalm 125. Psalm 125, I'm reading from verse, reading from verse 3. Psalm 125, verse 3. For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the Lord of the righteous. I thought you'd say amen to that. Amen. The yoke upon the wicked will not rest upon the righteous. The curse on the wicked will not rest upon the righteous. All the oppression, all the devastation coming upon the wicked will not come upon you in Jesus' name. Look at Psalm 5, verse 12. Psalm 5, verse 12. Psalm 5. What do you mean from verse 12 here? Something is happening already. I said something is happening already. You will never be the same again. It says, for thou, Lord, will bless the righteous. Thou, Lord, will bless the righteous. He will not curse the righteous, never. He will not punish the righteous, never. He will not oppress the righteous, never. He will not destroy the righteous, never. But for thou, Lord, will bless the righteous with favor, will thou compass him as a shield. And if the Lord has made you righteous because of the death of Jesus Christ on your behalf, because of the shedding of his blood on your behalf, I believe, according to the word of God, that blessings will come upon you from tonight in Jesus' name. Psalm 34, Psalm 34, and I'm reading from verse 19. Psalm 34, verse 19, the righteous. It says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him, tell me, Tell me, tell me, out of them all. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord has delivered me out of them all. It has happened already. Psalm 37, Psalm 37, I'm reading from verse 17. Psalm 37.